welcome back to the average sensitive channel in today's class we are going to learn how to make these beautiful jackets that we see here it's like a kimono jacket with flounce it has an open sleeve on this side as you can see and then it has like a opening here and also on this side it has this beautiful rouge effect that we see here and on the back it has like a pleated flounce on the back area to give it this bouncy look that we see here and this is what it looks like at the back it's a very simple tutorial and it's beginner friendly this is something you like to learn kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial thank you okay so i have three layers of this fabric ideally this design is going to take more but I'm going to try to manage my fabric. So I'm going to show you how you can, how you're going to make yours if you have a fuller fabric, okay? So I have three layers, just like I said, and I folded it into four so that I can cut both front and back together. So this fabric is a full length fabric, is by 60. So I have cut out my length. I'm using a length of 45 inches. Like I said, I'm managing fabric. If you want yours to be longer than this you will need more than length 45 but i'm using a length of 45 inches so that i can get my flounce from this okay so i cut out 45 then i have about 16 inches left here and that is what i'm going to use for my flounce i'm going to manage it for my flounce so this is going to be 16 inches by okay 17 inches by three yards okay and the one on the table here is of length 45 okay you can see the length of the one on the table is 45 inches so if you have more fabric let's say you have five years then you will not need to manage fabric then you'll be able to work with whatever length that you want so this fabric is folded into four the two that is completely folded here is what i'm going to use as my back and then the one that is opened that is on top is what i'm going to be using for my front because you know it's a jacket the front is opened that's why i have my front open and then the back completely closed so here on the starting point here i'm going to mark my neck line measurement so i'm going to be working with a neck width of three inches okay so from the back here i'll mark three inches here and then a neck depth of one and a half inches for the back you can also use one inch but i'm using one and a half inches so after marking that you're going to take your curve ruler and then connect to your neckline so i'm just going to cut it out so that we can see it because i'm not sure the chalk is showing well okay so that is going to be my neckline for the back so now for the front the back and front is not on the same line so i'm trimming the excess so now for the front like i said it's going to be opened on the front area so here on these three inches here i'm going to connect like this okay you can see me maintaining my three inches and then i will slant it to the back so you can see the way i'm slanting it you can see so here you just mark your seam allowance to create channel you know it's a rush kimono so you are going to sew it together and you need allowance for that so i'm just going to mark around one one to two inches here for my seam allowance and then i'm going to connect the cuff to that okay i hope you understand that after taking my neckline measurement so this cuff that i'm doing I will raise it up. I'm going to cut it only on the front. The back is going to remain closed, please. So now after creating this curve, I'm going to take my scissors now and then I'll go ahead and cut it. You can see that I am cutting just the front, the two fronts. That is the only one I'm cutting. I'm not cutting my back together with it. So I'll go ahead now and then I'm going to create the shape that I marked with my chalk. It's a net fabric, so my scissors is entering it. So you have to be careful when you are doing this. So that is all the cutting I'm going to do. And then on this side, the side is still completely closed. I'm going to go ahead and open the side because we need to join the sides together 
to create the channel for the rouge effect that we have so you can see the shape that we have for the front and then the shape that we have for the back so like i said the side is too close so i'm going to go ahead and open up the side as well so after this i'm going to show us how we are going to sew it we are going to sew the jacket first before we work on the on the flounce so the jacket has like an open open slit sleeve okay so for the open slit that you see on the sleeve area we are going to be using this upper part for that okay this upper part is what we are going to be using for the open slit and then this side is going to be the 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 side that we are going to rush okay that we are going to rush like this so for that to so sew this after laying your front on your back from my neck point here from my neck point here i'm going to mark around one and a half inches to two inches and then i'm going to sew so i'm going i'm marking that here you can see i'm going to sew from here to here and then i will leave a space of three to four inches depending on that little opening that you want there so i'm doing around 3.75 or three and a half inches okay i'll mark that here that place is going to be opened and then from where that stop i'm going to mark another one and a half to two inches and then i'm going to sew that as well to leave this completely open so now in essence this is where i'm sewing i hope my chalk is feasible i'll go ahead now and and close it so you can notch it remember we just marked on one of them and we have four pieces so you can place a notch so that the notch will guide you when you get to your sewing machine so i'm going to sew from the neck point to the first notch then i'll leave this open and i'm going to notch this next one again and sew from this notch to the next notch i hope we we get what i'm explaining i'm going to open it out now so that we can see it better so when you get to your sewing machine you are going to sew from your neck point which is here to this first notch then you're going to leave from here to here open so i've gone ahead to sew it so by the time you see it i'm sure you understand it better so all the places that i notched you can see i sew from the neckline this is the neckline i sew from the neckline and then stop at the first notch so from the neckline to here is around one and a half inches and then i opened it up by around three to four inches so from here to here is three to four inches then from here i sew another one like that okay so now i'm going to go ahead i did this for the two sides that was why i notched it so that they are going to be on the same point so what i'm going to do now is to open it up like this this is the front and this is the back so here i'm going to sew in the same allowance so you are going to put it like this and then i'm going to fold it a little bit but you can also sew on it because this fabric does not free okay so once you sew it you can see that it's going to be neat and this part is going to be a little bit opened so i'll take it to the sewing machine now and then i'm going to sew this down okay so now once you are sewing it you're going to sew it all the way to this part because all of this part remember we did not sew it all of this part is going to be opened so you need to close all of them up so i'll sew it to this place so now after sewing it i'm going to sew join the sides okay i don't want this to be too long that's why i'm taking all of them together so what i'm going to do first is to close this part this seam allowance i'm going to sew it down but when you are sewing you make sure you sew it to the end like this then after doing that for the two of them you take the front and back together and then you're going to sew the sides okay so i have gone ahead to to sew the side seam after sewing down the shoulder just like i explained to us so this is the shoulder you're going to sew it down so after sewing it down this is what it's going to look like on the right side so this is the first one we sew that first one and a half inches and then this is the space that we left and then this is the next one we sew before leaving the entire part so remember i said you should aim it up to this place as well because it's going to show so after that you're going to place your front and back on each other just like i explained and then you sew 
so after sewing the front and back on the side i went ahead to sew it down on each side as well so that i can create channel remember the side seem as like a rouge effect on the side okay so that is what i did the same allowance that i have after sewing i folded it inside just like this and then i sew it on the two sides so that i can create this channel to pass my rope so please if you want to do this you need to hem the lower part first so that you don't close your channel just like in normal way we create channel for outfits so now i have I have made my rope okay I just folded the fabric and then I sew it on it and then I use it to make a rope so now using my safety pin I'm going to pass the rope I'm using one single rope you can use two ropes as well so you just pass it on the two sides and then hold it down at the upper part but I'm using just this single rope so what I mean is that once I pass it up to the upper part I'm going to put it inside again on the second side so my safety pin open so i'm trying to find a way to close it up so that i can continue so i'll keep passing my rope to create my rush so once you pull it out to the edge like this you do that carefully you are going to put it inside back through the through the hole that you have so now you are going to pull it out from here my pin has opened so i'm trying to find a way to bring out the rope without losing it's okay so it's out now i'm going to pull it a little bit and then the second opening this is the shoulder side so now i'm going to go ahead and put the rope back on the second opening and then pull it out on the other side as so well. that's why i said i'm using a single rope so I have two ropes. I'm going to use the second rope to do the other side as well. Okay, so I have gone ahead to sew it and then I dragged it. So like I said, I'm managing fabric. So mine is just three yards. If you want small fullness around this part, uh, instead of 45 inches, you can make your length because you know you're going to rush it. And once you do this, it's going to jump so you can make your length even up to 50 inches or even 60 inches so by the time you you drag it up it's going to be fuller but i need the remaining parts to create my flans that was why i just had to stop it at around 45 inches and for the side as well okay for the side as well remember we used three yards okay so this is the opening that i have after taking my neckline and my shoulder from the three yards okay so if you want yours to be more than this you can use up to a stretch of four yards so that way you'll be able to use a, a width of two yards for the front and two yards for the back in my case it was one and a half yards for the front one i hope you understand what i'm talking about okay in my case this is three yards and then the length is 45 so after folding like this you have one and a half for the front one and a half at the back so that way once you fold into four you have quarter of three yards for each of them okay which is what i have here and that gave me this opening so if you want your own opening to be more than this after you have taken your neckline and your shoulder all you just need to do is to increase the width instead of three yards you can use four yards i hope you get what i mean so now this is the level that i have now the jacket is almost done so the next thing to do now is to take your measurement rand for the flounce so you can just put your fabric control into two then from your center back here you are going to start measuring what you have to where the front stops so from the center back here you're going to put your tape and then you start measuring what you have there make sure your measurement is accurate and then once you are done you can easily multiply the measurement 
by two to have for the two sides so i'm measuring to where my to where my front stops so this is about 60 inches for me okay so that measurement now 60 plus 60 that's 120 ideally you're not supposed to have a joining on this it's going to it's supposed to be cut on a single fabric but like i said i'm managing what i have on the hem of my clothes so i'm going to be having joining for mine but please ideally you're not supposed to have a joining on this if you are using a bigger fabric let's say you're working with five years or six years of fabric you'll be able to cut your flans on one single fabric so for me mine is going to have a joining so if you want to cut this now you're going to be cutting it in form of a flounce okay just like we cut her regular flounce normally you i have several tutorials on how to cut a flounce you have your you have your fabric partitioned like this and then you're going to start by creating the first circle then from there you start measuring the width that you want for your flounce and then you start creating it just like this okay i'm going to link a tutorial on how to count a flounce on this so that you get it but i'm sure if you have been watching this channel you know how to cut your flounce so you all this that i'm doing now is not going to be the width of your flounce but i don't have enough fabric to cut a flounce you can see so i'm going to be cutting mine in form of a flare so what i'm going to do the measurement that i have there which is 60 inches i'm going to cut it separately i cannot cut it together so if you have enough fabric and you want to cut together that's going to be 120 inches for you but for me that's 60 inches so that's 60 inches i'm going to divide it by 6.28 which is the which is the formula for getting the radius of a full circle flare so if my fabric can cut that if not i'm going to use the half circle flare method so i'll cut multiple flares and then join it together to form the the radius the radius now is that cent that measurement that we took that's going to be our radius so i'll cut multiple flares and then join it from this because it's very short so i'll cut the flares and join them together to make that measurement that i need so all you just need to cut your flare now is your radius and then you need to decide the length that you want for the flounce so i think around seven inches for me is fine so you are going to add that to your radius and use it to cut your flare so i will do this now okay so i've gone ahead to cut it i think i showed a little bit of the clip so like i said i just cut multiple flares to make the 120 inches that i need so you can see that i have joining on them you can see where i i had to keep joining fabric so ideally you're not supposed to join like i said so if you have enough fabric and you are creating a flounce like this you are only going to have a joining at your center back that's the only place where you're going to join so that means that after after measuring it remember after taking the measurements here we had 16 inches on one side so you're going to cut 16 inches for the first side and then 16 inches for the first, second side separately the reason why you're going to cut it separately is because the flounce at the center back here is shorter than what we have in front for my own I'm, i have around seven inches for my center back okay i have around seven inches for my for my for my front and then for the center back here i want to have around five inches so you can just cut it separately so that you have a smaller flounce in the beginning and then increase as you go but if you don't want it to have a joining after cutting your flounce all you just need to do is to put everything on fold 
and then once you get the center part which is going to be your center part so let's say this is my flounce you are going to put it on fold like this okay so all of this is going to be the front and this part is going to be the center back so once you have the center back you can just remove around two inches and then you cut and blend it to what you have coming but mind you for the center back is going to have pleats so you have to include the pleats so let's say let me just take the measurement of the center back so the measurement of the of the back okay the measurement of the back is seven inches so if you want it to have pleats you can multiply it by by two or three so you have to take that into consideration when you are trimming so make sure you trim the entire place that is going to be your center back but remember in my own case i cut multiple flares so after cutting my flare the the one on top okay the one the upper part i just cut out five inches from it and then i joined it as well so this is it i've joined all of them together and then those short one you can see the the length of this one is just about five inches okay i cut two and then i join together to make the five inches so this part this is going to be the center part so this one that i cut which is shorter that i joined to them i'm going to go ahead and pleat it to seven inches to make my center back to 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 make the back okay you can see the way i'm pleating it so when i'm sewing i'm going to pleat this one so that it will give me you can see this effect that is giving me at the back the pleat is just going to be at the back okay it's going to be at the back alone it's not going to extend to the front so let me bring the fabric so that you can see how it's going to be you can see this is where we have a joining okay all of this is the back so for the back the flare that you're going to have there okay let me just explain it like that for the back the flare you're going to have at the back is going to be a little bit shorter than what you have in front all you just need to do is to blend them you can see how i just cut to blend this before a minute so the flare at the back is going to be shorter and then you want to make sure that you increase the flare so you have to take that into consideration when you are cutting out your flare you increase this because it's going to have pleats here so for the center for the back here you are going to go ahead and place it just like this okay so i've gone ahead to sew it just like i explained this is the back so you can see how i pleated the back so that it's going to be giving me this effect that i have and then from the front you will sew the seven inches okay just like that all the way to where you have your back so when you get to the back this is what it's going to look like okay it's going to be longer than what you have here so now you are going to take your scissors and then you blend it okay remember this is where our front ended and you can see the extension that we have this is the back this is the front so in order for it not to be longer than the rest where this stops you are going to take your scissors now and then you are just going to blend it in like this with a curve okay i hope you see that so you can see now that it's well blended with what we have coming in so i'm going to go ahead now and fold this in you can fold it twice or you use your your bias you use your bias to sew it all around so you can see all of this journey that we have here we are not supposed to have it if you have a fuller fabric because i keep joining flares together that was why i have all of this so this is what it looks like now okay so here that you joined and sorry by the way if you want to sew you can see the way i sew it you place the right side of your flounce on the wrong side of your fabric so that by the time you finish sewing and you flip the right side of the flounce is going to be resting on this right side of your fabric i hope you understand that you place the right side of your flounce on the wrong side of the fabric so that by the time you sew and flip the right side is what is going to show and the inside is going to be neat like this so all the rough edges is going to be on this side so this rough edges you can go ahead and serge it and weave it so that it can be neat but this is a fabric that does not feel so you may not do that you can also top stitch on this but for me i'm going to go ahead now and iron it really flat okay i'm going to place a little bit of hemming gum here and then i'm going to go ahead and iron everything flat so on this hem area you can also top stitch but for me i'm going to iron everything a little bit so i'll iron it such that this allowance here 
they are not going to show again so i'm going to place my iron and iron everything flat like that so this is what we have now so i hope you understand the flange parts okay let me just use a paper to further explain the flange because i want you to understand don't be confused so let's say just like we cut our normal flange I have a tutorial on flange, you can go and watch it. So you first partition your pattern or your fabric like this, and then you start with one hinge, and then you increase it as you go. So now let's say that I want my the shortest part, that's the neck part, that's the part on your center back, which I used five inches, but this paper is small. So let's say I want that one to be three inches. So from here now, I can be working with three inches, and then I will continue to join it. Just like that so once you have enough for your back remember when we measured the the total place where we want to put our flans we measured 16 inches that is the exact measurement okay from the center back to the front we measured 16 inches which was our exact measurement but i did not factor all of these plates to it so if you want to add plates to yours like my own too you will need to add to it so you can add extra let's say 20 inches or 10 inches for the plate so let's say i'm adding 10 inches for the plate it means i'll have 70 inches in total and that is what i'm going to cut out for my flans that's if you want it to be two if you want to cut the entire flans together it means you are going to have 140 inches which is going to be a bit difficult that's why i advise that you cut your flans separately so that you will have a joining only at your center back i hope you understand that part so now to cut this flans you will go ahead now and keep marking so now after marking the three three inches if you want to increase it that's for the front so you can start increasing it and then you make it five inches if you have enough okay if you have enough three inches for your center back for your back now once you get to the front you can start increasing your flounce just like this and then you make it five inches just like that so that is one method another method you can use is just you can cut out your your full flare just like i did in my case you can cut out a full flare so let's say this is my flare i'm going to cut the radius as well so let's say this is the 60 inches this radius is the 60 inches and then we cut everything to be the same so you come to where your center back is going to be which is here so all you just need to do is to measure the length that you want for your center back once you have that length you are going to measure the space that will carry your center back so let's say it stops here so you keep maintaining that same measurement so once you get there you just find a way to blend this to what you have in front i hope you understand that so if you don't still understand this let me know in the comment section then maybe i'll film a separate tutorial on how to cut a flounce okay so once you cut it like that this part will definitely be shorter than what you have coming in front so let me open the front like this so this way you have everything together but if you want to cut it separately you can also do that and then you have a journey at the center back which is not going to show because you are going to be making pleats there so if you cut it separately it's going to make it easier because you will not have so many measurements to work with you must have divided it into two but if you are cutting it one in one single flare like this this is how you can reduce the center back and then you just go ahead and place that center back so that you will have something like this okay you can see what we have here at the center back here so now my jacket is ready i'm going to go ahead and iron it and then i'm going to hem this flans all around then i'll take it to the mannequin so that we can see what it looks like so after ironing this is what we have you can see how flat it is looking now and you will barely notice that the flounce was joined okay so it's just continuous like i said you can see the journey that i have here you're not supposed to have this if your fabric is long so everything is just going to be continuous like that and you have your flounce just like this so if you come to the shoulder area you will see what the, what we did on the shoulder so this is the space that we have 
if you want it to extend up to here you just need to extend your opening before you do the next one and a half inches so it's totally up to you and then all of these parts is going to be opened and this is the rouge effect that we have as well you can make it as close as you want my fabric is not so long it was just 45 inches so i could not reach so much but if you want yours to be fuller than this all you just need to do is to maybe work with a fabric of 50 to 60 inches and once you rush it it's going to give you something really bulky and voluminous so this is what it looks like on the other side now i'm going to turn it so that you can see what it looks like on the back so this is the back you can see the neckline on the back you can see all of the pieces that we have here to give it a fuller look and this is the structure that we have at the back you can see how pretty it is looking and how simple it is to make this if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye